this is really, really pretty. <gasps> it just broke. I'll be back. Um, I'll, I did from the top. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to apply makeup. I know, very basic. We're going back to the basics with this. I realized that I've never done a video on just how to apply makeup for beginners, for those people that never had somebody to guide them through the basics of makeup. I've gotten messages in the past where people have thanked me for guiding them through their makeup journey because they didn't have a mom there for them or a sister or anybody to really show them how to apply makeup. And and this is for you. This is for the people that just need the basics. Or if you're more of like a tomboy or never really just been into makeup but you want to apply it or you have a first date and you don't know where to start, I'm going to take you step by step, break it down from start to finish for you guys. And I'll be explaining what is the best type of makeup to use for your skin type and everything in between. So stay tuned if you want to see how to apply makeup for beginners step by step. Before we get into the makeup, I have a Dom Fan Mystery Box for you guys. So if you want a chance to win a Dom Fan Mystery Box, all you have to do is comment your IG handle and hashtag Dom Fam, and I'll direct message the winner at random, so good luck. Before we get into this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be a part of the Dom Fam. And without further ado, let's get into learning how to put on makeup today. I'm super up close and personal for this video so you guys can see every little thing on my face, including my dandruff. Just kidding, You're not supposed to see that. I've already kind of filled in my brows just because my brows are very sparse, super sparse. If you wanna see an in-depth tutorial on my brows, I did one in my last makeup tutorial. It's called Pretty Everyday Makeup. I will link it below so you guys can check it out if you want to know how I do my brows. But I am still gonna walk you through what you should do, the order and why and everything. So if you're new to makeup, let's get started. First things first, you wanna make sure your skin is clean. I wash my face every morning. You should too. <laughs> I use a bar of soap and a little face halo. I'll link it below. It's just like a little cloth of some kind that really gets all the dirt out and gives me a little tiny mini exfoliation. So my skin is always very brand new and clean. And then after that, if it's the morning time, I make sure to use a vitamin C for my dark spots. For those of you out there who have acne scarring and hyperpigmentation, it's really good to use a vitamin C all over your face. It's brightening and something that's kind of hydrating. I'll link the one that I use below. After that, I put on an SPF, so just in case I get any sun, I am protected. The SPF is gonna make you look younger longer. So invest in a good SPF. That is all happening before my makeup. My skin is really prepped and ready for makeup. It's clean and it's protected. So the first thing makeup wise that I do is make sure that my face is primed. It's kind of like when you paint, you wanna make sure your wall has a nice, even clean look to it so that you don't get any weird bumps or anything like that. Same thing with your skin. Do you have oily, dry, or combo? I have combination dry skin. So I normally try to gravitate towards something that is more hydrating and gripping for the makeup to last longer. So the one that I really like to use is Dermablend. This is an instant grip jelly primer. It's a three in one primer. It's hydrating, it's gripping to the makeup so your makeup is going to last longer. And it's also tightening for the skin. So those pores, those large pores I have on my cheeks will be a lot smaller. So I really like this primer, but if you don't have a primer on hand, I would use a really good moisturizer. The one that I love, 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 I use this every day. Even if I don't use primer, I'm fine with just using this. This is a good moisturizer. I'll link it below. It's good because it leaves you with a dewy finish and it has like a tacky kind of finish as well. So it really grips onto the makeup really well. So if you have a nice moisturizer or you're into skincare, you probably already have something that works great as a primer anyways. Don't worry about getting the exact brand that I'm showing you. The ones that I'm showing you are the ones that perform really well. I've used tons of primers, foundations, and everything. And these are my go-to favorites. So I know they work really well for me. So that's why I am showing you them, but don't worry about getting the exact one. There's tons out there. Do your research, read reviews before you buy something. But if your skin is more on the oily side, then you're gonna want something that's oil-free, mattifying. And if you have large pores, something that's going to smooth out those pores. So keep that in mind. But I like something that just does everything in one. And that's why I like this one. So I'm just gonna apply this to my hands. It looks like that. It's just clear. You don't need a lot. And you're just going to apply it all over your face. 
So primers can be used as a barrier between your skincare and makeup, or they can make your makeup just go on very smooth. Some of them are just long lasting. They all do different things. I kind of like the best of everything. So I want to find something that does multiple things in one. That's just my personal preference, but you may just really want your makeup to last long. So that's what you look for. Maybe you want your face not to be so oily and that's like your main concern. Then you just look for something that it's oil free and mattifying. Because my skin is already so dry and matte, I want something that's gonna bring it to life and give me that dewy glow. So I really like this guy. And then after you get your primer set, your skin is now ready for foundation. Makeup to me is very personal and different for everyone, depending on what your skin type is, what you want from your makeup. Now, when it comes to foundation, there's different types and different finishes. So the one that I personally like is something that's a little bit more natural and dewy. I really love that healthy, natural glow, so I try to go for something more dewy. But when I first started in makeup, I had a lot of acne, a lot of blemishes, texture. I still do, I still have acne, blemishes and texture, but it it was a lot more intense back then. So I wanted full coverage, mattifying. I didn't want anything shiny. I just wanted to look like a porcelain doll. That was my goal. I would get the most full coverage matte foundation and concealer that I could get. But now, I personally like something that is glowy, natural. I'm really embracing my skin these days and it's really improving. So again, think about your skin type. If you have oily skin, choose something that's more mattifying. So I have a couple options. If you're anything like me, you're gonna want that natural, dewy look. So my go-to foundations right now are the Makeup Forever Reboot because this makes your skin so, like it gives you a really natural, dewy glow. Wow, I need to really wipe that off for you guys. <laughs> Hello. I love the dewiness that it leaves your, it just makes your skin look so healthy. And this is a new one from Shiseido. This one has nice coverage. Like the coverage isn't like crazy heavy. It's like light to medium. Um, and I can build it up to medium most of the time. So these two are my are my go-tos. This one's a lot newer. Sorry that they're so dirty. It's just I actually use them so much. But yeah, this one is really good. This is new and I love the staying power. I love how it makes my skin look. But if I was actually going out, I would want something that is more full coverage but still gives me a natural skin-like finish. Nothing cakey or dry. So if you're wanting something more like that, that I would choose the NARS Natural Radiant Foundation. This is the shade Barcelona when I am tan. Right now my tan is fading. This right here is great coverage and it doesn't ever look cakey. It gives you a really pretty natural kind of glow. And if you're looking for something that's more on the drugstore end, this is a really good one. This is the Born to Glow. More of a natural finish, has a good coverage, kind of similar to this. So it's like natural, glowy, but it has like a medium coverage. You would go with this one. This one's really good. Or if you are oily, go with the matte infallible pro matte one. This is great coverage, leaves you matte, poreless, like a porcelain doll. So I really like those two. But if you just wanna even out your skin tone, use something like this. This is the It Cosmetics CC Cream. It has more good for you skin ingredients. It has the SPF 50. It has like a nice, soft coverage and it's really about evening everything out for that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to put on this foundation. This is the Shiseido. When it comes to applying foundation, my go-to is a beauty blender because it does everything for you. If you don't know what to use to apply your foundation, you're between a brush and a beauty sponge. It doesn't have to be a beauty blender, but it, this is kind of the best one. There's also one from Real Techniques that's really good too and it's not as expensive. There's that option as well. I would say go with the beauty sponge because you cannot mess up with a beauty sponge. It soaks in some of the products so it doesn't ever give you too much unless you really kind of just, you know, just like create a big, huge dollop and soak it in there, which you never want to do. So I just put a little bit on my hand, work it around, and then I tap my beauty sponge. And this to me gives me the most even, natural looking coverage. And then you can build this up. So I go in and I do that. And you want to make sure that you're using a color that is going to match your neck and the rest of your body. You don't want to have this line going. So I always like to just take my beauty blender and go right along my neck and make sure that that is nice and even. 
Okay, I do my ears just because I really don't want to have any noticeable signs that I'm wearing makeup and I want to ensure that it really matches every part of my body. So I always go over my ears and lightly kind of go over your under eyes. Don't spend too much time there because your under eyes are very delicate. Makeup can look very cakey easily in that area just because it's so thin and delicate. So I'm gonna go over very lightly right on top of my eye so that it evens that area out. If you don't have a lot of discoloration here, don't worry about it too much. Just kind of go over it and move on. But I do have a lot of redness around this area so I kind of go over everything. And you want to use the big round side of the beauty sponge on the bigger parts of your face. When you get to little smaller areas, then you wanna use the pointy side. If your lips are super, super bright pink, what I like to do is just go over them with my beauty sponge because later I might wanna put on a color and I want it to be true to color. You don't have to do this if you just really don't care to do that. <laughs> but I'm doing it just because my lips are really pink right now and I don't know why. After you're completely done, you feel like, okay, everything looks even. Go in again. Go in with no more foundation. Just go in with whatever you have left on your beauty sponge and just go and tap into every area of your face to double check that everything is blended. There's no spots or harsh lines that are uneven, especially around your neck area. Your neck area is the most noticeable area where it's like, whoa, that color doesn't match. Right in here, I don't know why sometimes I even miss this if I'm going too fast. I'm like, dang, I should have just double checked that. I swear I looked at that. I've been doing my makeup for a very long time, so I can do my brows first and then creams later and work around it. I'm very comfortable with it, but if you're not comfortable with that and you're a beginner, probably don't do your brows first because you're gonna mess up and be frustrated that you have to go back and fill them in. So just wait, make sure you have an even face and then do your brows. So now at this point, I'm gonna let my foundation sit and dry on its own a little bit. Your foundation also may oxidize. So you wanna allow some time for it to dry down to its true color, just in case you need to go back and fix anything. So it might get a little bit darker, it might turn a little bit orange. I mean, a lot of different things can happen. With what I'm showing you right now, these brands and this particular foundation doesn't do that. But I do like it to kind of dry down. So while it's drying down, I'm gonna do my brows. How your brows come out is how the rest of your face is kind of going to look. Your brows frame your face, so you want your brows to look even and balanced. So you can either do that with a pencil or you can use powder. And it depends the type of brow you want. Now this is basic how to apply makeup for beginners. So we won't go into like the different types of brows because that's a little bit more advanced. We're just gonna fill them in, make them look even and balanced. My favorite brow pencil is the brow blade because one side is one of those fancy model brow kind of styles. And the other end is just a plain, regular, amazing, brow pencil. So I'm going to take the brow pencil and usually if you're starting out just get yourself a brow pencil. This one's from Revlon that's really good too. Just get yourself a brow pencil with a spoolie so you can comb through your brow hair afterwards. So I'm just going to go in and fill in any sparse areas that are missing. If you don't know where to start on your brow, take your pencil, line it up. I have a crooked nose. Okay, so I fake it a lot. I contour my face a lot so that it looks more balanced and aligned. But what you typically wanna do is your brow should end up right there. That's where your brow should be. The point of the brow should be here. So right there. The brow should end right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my little mark. So right here, and then here, and then mark it at the end like that, oh my goodness. If you have a pretty good amount of brow hair, you can just get away with this by using a brow powder and that works really well. I feel like you should always set your brows because any cream, even if it's a pencil, is going to move eventually later on. If you touch your brow or anything happens to that area, it's gonna move. So you wanna make sure you set it in place. Once we've filled everything in and you feel like everything is nice and balanced and even, when you're choosing your brow shade, you wanna make sure you choose a color that's a shade lighter than your natural hair color, but use whatever color makes you feel the most comfortable. So after my brows are filled in, I like to set my brows. I'm gonna be using the transition palette to set everything on my face because it has my brow shade in here, which is this guy right here. If you're new to makeup, this is 
perfect for you because it has all the shades you need to set your face with no matter what part it is. So I'm doing my eyebrows with Kohl, which is this shade right here, but you can do bronzer, contour, brightening, blush, everything. So everything you need in one palette, you need, don't really need to go anywhere else because it also has all the core eyeshadow shades that you need for an everyday kind of look. So I'm gonna go into Kohl. There's also some other shades up here that are really great for brows. So just, it's like everything you need, no matter what skin tone, no matter what you need it for, it's kind of there for you. So I love, love this palette. I'm gonna go in with this angled eyeliner brush and I want these like really nice, even strokes. I'm gonna take a little bit of Kohl and I like to create little brow hairs. So I'm setting my brow and I'm also creating his little brow flicks. If you want to just fill it in, you can fill it in, but use a very light, light hand. I'm going to go in very lightly and brush in the direction that my hair would grow. Use a little spoolie to comb through everything. After that's done, then I'll go in with a brow setter. NYX just came out with one. This is a more affordable option that's really good. This is the brow glue. A little stringy, but it's nice and affordable. One that I absolutely love hands down if you buy, it's worth the money. This is Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. You just brush through your hairs like this, press them upwards, and I'll go in the direction that I kind of drew in my brows. So I'm gonna go up here, middle part of my brow goes slightly in that direction, and then the end just kind of goes up like that. So our brows are set in place. They're not gonna move around. They're also not gonna come off that easy either because we set with powder. So our brows are done. Very happy for us. <laughs> if you like something that's very sharp on the bottom of your brow, you can take a little tiny brush like this, and I've been using this to kind of clean my brows at the bottom. It looks like that. Very, very thin. Or you can just take a concealer brush and just kind of go underneath and swipe through anything you want to clean up or make a little bit more defined. And you just go in like that. I'm pretty happy with how the bottom looks. So overall, brows are looking good and I'm really happy about it. So now that your foundation is set in place, you can kind of see, check out your skin to see if there are any places that need a little extra love and a little more coverage. So that's what concealer is for. Concealer is all about coverage. Some people just use concealer by itself because they don't want like a full even face. They kind of like their even skin tone already. They just need to hide a little bit of dark circles or blemishes. I have a little bit of both, so I'm gonna show you both. For me, since I like more of a natural dewy foundation all over, I want my concealer to be more mattifying and have that balance. And I want it to also be high coverage, not natural, not medium, high, just get rid of it. So the areas that I like to focus on are my under eyes and around my nose. I feel like it sometimes it needs a little more love, has a little more redness than other parts of my face. So my favorite concealer right now is the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Finish. This one is amazing. It's such great coverage. It kind of gives you a new layer of skin. So if you are brightening any part of your face, I would suggest you using a shade that is two to three shades lighter than your natural skin tone. If you just have a blemish that still didn't cover up with the foundation because you like more of a natural look, then get a concealer that is going to match your skin tone. Don't try to go brighter or darker just match your skin tone the best that you can. It should look undetectable. But I personally, my foundations are pretty medium, light to medium, and I build them up so that they are medium and give me some coverage without completely caking my face up. Now we are going to just get rid of our dark circles. I have darkness in the inner corner and I still have it around my eye, so I'm gonna go in with this and just, and just apply it right here. Now I have bags on my eyes and it sucks. So because I have like a little pouch here, it's kind of more pronounced in this area. I wanna even that out with the rest of my face going down this way. So I bring down my concealer. So it just depends on how your face is shaped and your eyes and everything. It's very, like I said, makeup is very personal to everybody. It's gonna be different for everyone. I also like to add a little lift. So I'll bring my concealer out here and down here just to brighten and right in here. Oh, don't forget the nose. And right there. So this is all very brightening. I'm not concealing. I'm not correcting any redness really. I'm just brightening this area. All right, so now I'm gonna get the same Beauty Blender and press the concealer into my skin. I do like my concealer to sit for a few seconds before I go in. You get a little bit more coverage 
out of your concealer when you let it sit for a little bit. Don't let it sit for too long, but just give it some time to breathe before you go in with the beauty blender. I like to bring my concealer upwards because I have darkness around the corners of my mouth that kind of drag my mouth down, so I always bring it up. Just give it a little lift. Be very, very delicate with this. You shouldn't be tugging your skin at all. Really just tapping everywhere you go. And you get more coverage when you tap rather than move around like this. So if you're more oily and you want a mattifying primer, then I would use more of a natural finish concealer. And I have one for you right here, just in case you're like, what do I use? This is a really good coverage. It's clean beauty as a natural finish. It's not matte, it's from Kosas. And I think you'll really love it if you're more oily. I'm gonna take that concealer, whatever I have left over, and move it onto my eyelids. I'm gonna use this as a base to my eyeshadow because this is gonna be like a primer. They do have eyeshadow primers. I personally am not a big fan of them. Even when I was a working makeup artist, I never really liked using them because sometimes they're a little bit too gripping and it doesn't allow your eyeshadow to kind of move around and kind of just like places it there. So I just like to use my concealers and my foundations as my base. And then I'm gonna go in and tap this brightener in here and there we go. We're nice and bright and concealed, we're even. And you don't wanna go out the house like this because you look very flat. Your eyes, your face, everything's just even. And now you wanna add some depth, some warmth into your cheeks, your face, everything. So you don't wanna go out the house and you're just like, okay, I'm ready and put some mascara on. I would go in and add some depth to your face. Now I'm gonna get into glow. The glow for the skin is different for everybody. Some people like powders, some people like creams, and if you just like, I don't know which one do I use? Well, it depends on your skin type again. If you are dry, textured skin, that's me, I like creams. They look more natural, kind of gives you like a glowing from within, rather a glowing from on top and I can see your highlight. You know, I can see the little glitter. Some people like that and that's perfectly fine. I personally don't because I feel like it really emphasizes the texture on my skin. So what I do is use a cream highlight. So this one is Skin Gloss and this is the Glossed Peach Shade. And what you're gonna do is tap that on your cheeks. I like kind of a warm glow, so I'm gonna take that. There's four different shades of this, so you just like choose whichever kind of glow that you wanna go for. I like the warm peach glow. So I'm gonna take that on my cheekbones, anywhere that you want your face to look more pronounced, more just glowy, put it there. I like to put some here on the nose and the chin. Actually, I like to put it here as well, just because it makes the skin look more, more natural. Anywhere you want your skin to look glowy, just put it there. Now that is my glow, that's my highlight. But if you really want that fierce, intense glow, then you're gonna wanna use a powder. So the powder that I'm suggesting for you guys is the Becca Opal. This is really, really pretty. <gasps> it just broke. I'll be back. So powders were really not meant for me. So <laughs> anyways, moving on. Now I'm gonna go in with a cream blush. The cream blush that I'm using is from Rare Beauty. This is the shade Nearly Apricot. So I'm gonna take that with my beauty blender. Just take a little bit and pop it onto my cheeks. I wanna apply it right on my cheekbone up in this area. Try to stay away from this area. I mean, it does look cute depending on how you apply it or what look you're going for, but it just looks a little bit more lifted and natural. Also, a little bit on the nose is fine. I just like how it looks. So there goes all of our creams. I now need to set my face in place. So to set my under eyes and give them a little bit more of a brightening boost, I'm going to use natural right here and dip into a little bit of frothy. And this is a face brush and it fits very easily right in there. You can go in with a beauty sponge or a brush for this, but I'm gonna go in with a brush and just tap in the color right there. If you want a full-on, all-over set, then go ahead and use a full-size face brush. This is a full-size face brush. And dip into these two, you, it'll fit perfectly. So here and here, just so you know, you can fit a full-size face brush and it's gonna work perfectly and just kind of work it in all over your skin and it'll set all your creams in place. Dab into these areas to brighten and set. And you can see that I'm using like dabbing motions because you get the most out of your powders by patting them. You get the most out of anything for, with patting it. So go like this, unless you're trying to diffuse it, then you do that. So here, 
I just want a soft layer right there. So I'm just gonna go over it like this. And this is a Smith 131 brush, in case you guys are wondering. I'm gonna set the center of my face right in here. And that glow that we put underneath is gonna shine through the powder. So it's gonna give you a really nice natural glow. Anywhere that you have darkness that you wanna brighten, just go in at this moment and do that. So next, I'm going to bronze my face. To bronze, I'm gonna be using Caramel and Toffee, these two shades right here. For the bronzer, I'm gonna take the F10 brush from Sigma, and I'm gonna take Caramel and Toffee to warm up my face. You wanna add some warmth because you don't wanna look flat. You wanna have some dimension in your face. So I'm gonna take it onto my cheeks. And some people just, they don't even like to put blush on, they just rather just do bronzer. So I'm gonna stop there. The bronzer shades are the colors that I like to use on my crease the most. So once we get to the eyes, I'll show you guys how I use the bronzer on my eyes. All right, I'm gonna go into those two shades and just kind of contour my nose. And when I contour my nose, if you don't really feel like you need to shape your nose in any way, then don't worry about this step. But I really like to bring some added shape with bronzer first on my nose. So I'll start right here at the beginning of my brow and go down so that the contour flows into the eyes really easy. And then if you have a pointy nose, just take some bronzer or contour and shade right at the tip so that it makes your nose look a little more short or rounded and then depending on how much you want your nose to look if you want your nose to look thinner then you want to go in really close together on the two little sides but make sure that they're buffed out you don't want them to look like two strips you really want to make sure that is nice and buffed out so this this is like a base contour i like my eyes to look contoured too so this is like a very basic thing you should do. I'm going to take the caramel and toffee shade. I'm just going to sweep this back and forth into the crease. Using the same bronzer shade that you used on your face on your eye is going to bring a lot of balance to your face and I like to bring it out a little bit just so it gives you more of like a lifting kind of look. I just like to bring everything upwards. So I'm going to take that and work that back and forth into the crease. I'm also going to take the same shade and just drag it down on the lower lash line. You don't want your brightener to look unnatural and just look super bright all the way up to the rim. You want to add in that natural depth on the lower lash line. So I just go in with whatever I have left and sweep it back and forth. So now your face has some warmth going on. You can stop there, but if you want to add a little bit more of structure, you can contour your face. And to contour, you want to use a different shade that doesn't have as much red and orange in it. So you want to use something that is a little bit deeper and more cool tone. I'm going to use Mocha. It's a soft looking natural contour for me. I'm going to take a slanted brush. This one is from Maybelline. I'm going to take that because it has like a nice fluffy slant to it. I'm going to go into Mocha, just like a touch, tap off the excess. And I want to really make sure that my nose has some nice structure to it. My nose is not very symmetrical, so I really like to make sure that it has structure. The same brush and just contour right here on my forehead. Anything that's brightening on your face is gonna make that area look more prominent, high, and brighter. Anything that you're making look a little bit more darker is gonna bring it back and kind of recede that area. So I'm gonna take the same color mocha, and I'm just gonna bring it very close to my hairline because I want it to look like it's coming from my head. <laughs> I want it to look very natural, so I'm gonna take it really close to the hairline. You could do the same thing on your cheeks if you wanna add a little bit more bone structure, but if you're gonna do that, make sure that you sweep upwards and very lightly. Don't use a heavy hand, just go very lightly on the bone area. So now I'm gonna go back into the eye area. I kinda like my lids to look more healthy and bright just because naturally they're a little bit dull. So I'm gonna take natural and a little flat shader brush. This is great to pack pigment and get a lot of eyeshadow in one area. So I'm gonna take natural here and just pack it on to the lid. So that makes it look a little bit more healthy. So natural is like my favorite color for everything brightening. Also, if you want your brow bone and the shape of your brow to kind of pop a little bit more, you can add frothy and natural and just take it right underneath, sweep it back and forth. So it kind of highlights that brow bone and also just makes your eyeshadow look a lot more clean. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of a deeper shade 
to darken the outer crease a little bit. When it comes to eyeshadows, an everyday look for me is more neutral tone like this. But if you like something that is more colorful and that is your everyday, you want more color in your shadow, then you can totally use the same steps but use color instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of a deeper shade for the crease. And for the deeper shade, I'm gonna take cinnamon. Always tap your brush because you don't want too much eyeshadow at one time. So you always wanna build things up. You never wanna just pile on a bunch of color and then try to go down from there. So I like to take the darker shades on the outer corner of the eye because then it adds a little bit more lift, adds a little bit more drama, and it gives your eyelid a really nice defined look. I'm also gonna take a little bit of this eyeshadow and bring it on the outer part of my lower lash line. This also helps to bring balance to the eye. Now I am done with my eyes, very easy. A lot of people like inner corner highlight or a little bit of glow on their lid. I personally just like it to look fresh and bright, but if you want a little bit of a glow, I have this shimmer palette right here from Rare Beauty. So I'm gonna take this shade right here and add a little bit of a pop of glow right into the inner corner. And again, anywhere you put something that's glowy, that's bright, it's gonna add more attention to that area. It's gonna make it look bigger, brighter, and I just really like how it looks on the inner corners. Especially if your eyes are a little close set, this really balances the eye area out and just gives you a nice pretty sparkle. And then you can also put it on your brow bone in here, but I just like it to look very nice and simple, so I'm gonna leave it how it is right here. After this, I'm gonna create a little wing. I'm gonna use this angled brush right here. This is actually a brow brush, but because it's so thin, it's perfect to create a precise line. Mix 18 brush. So I'm gonna take this brush and I'll dip into coffee beans. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of a wing right here. I'm gonna start at the center of my pupil, like where the center of my pupil is. Everything after it should be very thin and kind of disappear. But I'm gonna start here and then go upwards. I want my angle to look like, just exactly like the brush. So I'll just start out here and I'll bring it in. I kind of want to smudge out my wing a little bit. I like it to look a little natural, so I'm just gonna go over with the pencil brush. All the brush hairs are very close together and stiff, so it moves the color around a little bit more. So I'm gonna just go over the end so it doesn't look super harsh, or anywhere that there's like a harsh line, I kinda wanna fade it out a little bit. Doing a little bit of a wing also kinda lengthens your eye a little bit. Now that our eyeshadow is done, our eyeliner's done, now we're gonna curl our lashes. Put down the curler at the base and then lift it up a little bit because that's gonna give you more of a curl and it's also gonna avoid pinching your skin. So just like this, kind of pump it one or two times. Then I like to squeeze it and you're gonna get a really pretty lift to your lash. Now that our lashes are curled, we're gonna put some mascara on. The mascara is gonna make our lashes stand out, we're gonna look flirty, girly, beautiful. You could just not use eyeshadow and use a mascara and you'll feel really pretty and girly already. So I'm gonna go in with one of my favorite mascaras. This one is from Essence. It's called Lash Princess. I have tried several expensive mascaras and this one is so good. This is beautiful. It works like a dream. So you always wanna start at the base. So I'm gonna go here at the base, but don't push down because it's gonna smudge on your eyelid. Set it there, don't press it in, and then wiggle it side to side until you get to the top. And if you put your mirror at the bottom, you can kind of see the base so that you don't get it on your eyelid. Another trick that I like to do, you guys, is go in the opposite direction of where your lashes grow. So go to the right, go to the left, and then you're gonna get the biggest lift. It's kind of like when you flip your hair, like if you always wear your hair to one side, it's gonna always know to go to that side. But if you flip it over, you get this natural like volume. So that's what happens to your eyelash. So I'm gonna go to the right, to the left, and upwards. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other eye. So I'm just gonna start at the base, go and wiggle up. I'm gonna go to the right, to the left, and up. After you've applied some mascara, your lashes are gonna kind of naturally lose that curl. Don't worry, once you're done with your makeup completely, you can go back with your eyelash curler and recurl your lash and it's gonna look beautiful. Also, you never wanna pump your mascara like this because that's not gonna ever do anything for you. It's gonna actually dry out your mascara. So get it, give it a really good push in there and let it go. For the bottom lashes, 
you want to look down. So you want to pull your mirror up and look down and go side to side, like wiggle your wand and try not to touch your skin. This looks so crazy. I feel like I've never actually done this, but I really don't want you guys to get mascara on your skin. So this is gonna help you avoid that completely. Just wiggle the area that you want the mascara to be in. Now we're gonna apply some blush. I know I applied some cream blush, but I wanna really lock it in and bring that flush of color back to my cheeks. So I'm gonna take blushing, which is this shade right here, and a little bit of soft and sweet, and just sweep that on the cheeks, back into the hairline. I like to bring it around the temple as well, and then across the nose. This is totally optional. I've just been doing this for the past year. I don't know why, but I really like it. Once we've applied the blush, then you're done with your face. You're completely done, but you always wanna go back in with your beauty blender to make sure everything is blended nicely so you don't know where anything starts and finishes. It just kind of blends together perfectly. So go over everything, use the big side of the blender, and just go over all of your face to really blend everything in. If you feel like you need a little bit more coverage under the eyes, you can get your beauty blender, go into the shades that you want and just press it into the areas. If you feel like you need a little bit more brightness, I feel like I do. And I kind of want to bring down that contour a little bit. So I'm going to tap it into the contour area of my nose. And that is the entire face. Now, an extra step that I like to do to make sure that everything is really locked in is take a setting spray. So I'm going to be using this one from Benefit. This is the Pore Professional Super Setter. This is going to help your makeup last all day. It's gonna lock everything in. You have the powder. Your makeup isn't going anywhere once you get a good setting spray. So this one I like because it feels weightless. It softens the look of larger pores. And if you have a little bit too much powder on, you can just spritz this on. It'll make your skin look like skin again. So I'm gonna just spritz that on really quick. Foliate your lips beforehand. Use like a sugar scrub. Or you can also use this. This is the MAC Prep and Prime. You can really feel the moisture on your lips as soon as you apply it. It's very, it glides on so easy, but it also has a gripping effect to it. So any color that you put on top of this is going to last. Just makes your lips feel really, really smooth too. So this is a good one. This is called Prep and Prime Lip. And then after that, I'll take a natural, for me, I like natural tones. So I'm gonna take the Dulce Lip Liner, but here you can use any lip color you want. I just like to define my lip line a little bit and then go in with a gloss. I like a natural nudie tone for like every day. I also like to make sure that this area of my lip personally is a little more fuller and higher up. And then the sides are just more natural some people like to make the sides a little bigger. I feel like it looks more natural if you just let it be. And then after you have your lip liner on, then I'm going to take a gloss. I'm going to be using the Fenty Beauty Pinch Me, the Luscious Lip Balm. And I'm going to take that and use that as my gloss right over the top. Any kind of gloss on your lips is going to make your lips look a little more full. And it just looks, it just looks really pretty. So... I love like gloss on the center of my lips, they're all over. Hydrated, glossy lips are my thing. So now our eyelashes have dried, so I'm gonna go back in with this eyelash curler. And again, start at the base and then work our way up. And bam, <laughs> your eyelashes are gonna be so curly. I absolutely love this combo. So I'm gonna take a brown, liner so that you don't see the skin on my eye i'm gonna lift my eye up and this is called tight lining so i'm gonna take it and put the eyeliner on the inside of my eye so i'm gonna do it on this one without talking and we just tight lined our eyes and that is our finished look <laughs> enjoyed this video and if you know nothing about makeup I hope you know a little bit more today I hope that it's easier for you to find your way through this makeup journey if you're new to makeup I am so glad I was able to do this for you guys and really break down every step I love you guys so much thank you for watching don't forget to check out these two videos right here if you haven't checked them out and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe that way you see a new video every single week and you're part of the Dom fam I love you guys so much thank you for watching and until the next video bye dollies